Hello, I'm Yubri from Smallfish. Welcome to Fish School 2.0, episode 0. This tutorial series is going to focus on making a shrimple game called Snot Farm, a recreation of Gary's original Snot Farm. It will include an overview of the new scene system, prefabs, components, player controller, enemies, UI, effects, and lastly, networking. While this tutorial is going to explain some harder to grasp concepts, we won't be going into detail over basic C-sharp knowledge such as syntax, naming conventions, and more. You can still watch this tutorial and follow along. If you're having issues understanding the code, you can either ask ChatGPT or in our Discord server, where we have a dedicated HELP ME channel. In this first episode, we're not going to do any actual coding, just setting up everything necessary to start your project and a general overview of the scene system, which has replaced the old entity system. You can use the timestamp chapters of this video to skip any step of the process that you might have already done in the past. Let's start by visiting a set party. Sandbox's backend for editing and exploring the user-generated content. Now, log in through your Steam account. This is a social login which is also used to detect if you own Sandbox. The site might change layout in the future, but the process is still going to be the same. To start releasing a game, you first need an organization. Click on your profile picture on the top right and select Create an organization. Now you have to pick a short name. This is going to end up on the URL of your organization, so it only accepts lowercase characters and no special characters. I'm not going to create a new org right now for this tutorial, but as soon as you press this button, it's going to bring you to the main page of your org, from where you can change the display name, logo, and description. Now, before starting our project, it is very important to set up version control. For that, I use GitHub Desktop, the official GitHub application, which makes the process so easy that even artists use it. I'll leave a link down below to download it. Setting it up is pretty easy, just log in to GitHub or create a new account. When creating a new project, I always get the process wrong. What you want to do is first create a new repository, select the repository on top left, add and create new repository. Give it a name and select the folder where you would like to hold your project. We can ignore the default gitignore, which defines all types of files to avoid uploading on the cloud. Sandbox provides their own, which excludes compiled assets. Now we can move on to booting Sandbox up. Go to Steam and select the Game Editor. If this is the first time opening the tools, it might take a while to load, so expect 5 minutes to 10 minutes of waiting. After that it's gonna take less than 1 minute. You will be presented with the project manager. Let's create a new project and give it a name. We'll go with Snot Farm. 2. For the folder, select the one that was just created by GitHub Desktop. and create. This is going to open the editor, showcasing the default minimal scene. But if we go to the GitHub desktop, you can see that the game has been set up, including the git ignore file. Let's call this change initial. Commit the changes and publish our new repository. You need to push changes if you want them to appear on GitHub, else they will remain local to your computer. See? Version control wasn't that hard. If you ever screw up or there's a power outage, now you are safe. Let's have a look at the editor. This is my layout. Let me reset to the default one. You can load and save layouts. Just drag the windows around through the nodes they have on top, stick them anywhere, resize, do whatever. You can enable or disable windows here, which you can find a few that are disabled by default. While I would love to use my layout, it works best for my ultra wide screen, and the default layout sucks, so I already prepared a layout to use instead for this tutorial. Inside of the scene window, you can control the camera by holding right click and using WASD to move and shift to speed up. 
All of this can be edited through the camera icon. Let's click on stuff in the scene to interact with them. For example, this game camera, you can see the preview and other information. Move it around, change mode at the top here, rotate, scale, smiley face, or you can use the hotkeys, which is W to move, E to rotate, R to scale. Enable or disable grid snapping, change the grid size, use the local space or the world space, snap the angles, Ctrl S to save your scene. Now, I'm not gonna explain everything new with the scene system, you can check this video out for more information, but here's a basic rundown. Over here, you have your hierarchy window. You have your current scene, in this case it's called minimal, you can find it here in the scenes folder. You can select the scene itself to change a few settings that aren't important right now. All of these that are coming off the scene are called game objects, and it's the main building block of the scene system. Everything is a game object at this point. You can see this is clearly a cube, and this is clearly a camera, but they are both game objects. They've just been renamed to cube and camera. The only difference between these two game objects is the components they hold. For the camera game object, it has a camera component. Pretty straightforward. The camera component is also able to create this small window, but we're gonna see this in a separate tutorial. In the inspector we can mess around with the values, and you can see them update in real time. The cube game object instead is just a model renderer component displaying a cube model. If you want to create a new game object, you just right click in the hierarchy and either create empty or select one of the default presets. Undo your chains with Ctrl Z, and let's mess around with components and add functionality to these game objects. If we go to the top, we can go into play mode, which is going to boot up your scene. Right now, nothing is happening, and if we go back to the scene window and move this cube up, you can see that it's not falling down. This is because it's missing the component needed to give it collisions and simulate physics. Let's go back into edit mode and add a component to the cube. You can search the component by name or navigate through the different sections. In our case, we'll go to the physics category and add a box collider, which is already set up to fit perfectly around the default cube model, so we don't have to touch anything. All this component does, though, is give it collisions, not simulate the physics. For some objects, that's the best option. We don't want our map to fall into the void, so it only has a collider, but we want our cube to have gravity. So let's go ahead and add a rigid body component, which has gravity enabled by default. Now, if we save our scene and hop into play mode, the cube disappeared. But, by going into our scene window, you'll see that it's actually just falling through the void. To stop this, let's also add the collision component to our plane model. But, not a rigid body component, because this one needs to be static. Just resize and move the collider so it fits the model well. Save and play. And if you move the cube, you'll see that it finally collides with the plane and doesn't fall into the void. Let's make this more fun by adding more cubes. We can Ctrl C and Ctrl B to copy and paste objects. Or even better, you can hold your Shift key and move the cube to create copies. Now here's a problem. We have made modifications to the scene, but we are inside of play mode instead of edit mode. Make sure to know the difference, because if we save right now, it's going to ask us to create a new scene, which is going to save all changes made inside of the game. To showcase a few more components before ending this first episode, let's look at the camera. A few components are meant to work together. For example, a rigid body component is useless without collisions, and for our camera components, we have a few that can add post-processing effects. We've got blur, 
film crane sharpen you name it they got it of course these components will be useless without a camera component inside of the same game object here is something to do while waiting for the next episode explore the different components you have here perhaps check out all of the post-processing effects or make a little map with basic shapes and collisions that concludes the first episode of fish school thanks for enjoying our fish tent